be quiet, please. With the feet, hip width apart as usual. Just feel the floor through your feet. Make sure they are hip width apart. So look down and check and make sure your toes are pointing forwards. You can't always turn until you physically look down and see. I have to adjust my right foot a little bit because it points out naturally. Good. And then with the hands on the hips here, I just want you to rock forwards and backwards. Feel what your feet have to do when you rock onto the toes or when you rock onto the heels. <laughs> Feel what your quads and your hamstrings have to do, so the fronts and the backs of your thighs. Can you close the guinea pig cage, please? Are they going to escape? Forwards and backwards. Side to side. Squeeze one glute and then the other one. I can see myself in here, and I can see that I'm only taking my hip directly over the foot. I don't want you doing this. So this isn't what we're looking for. We're taking the whole body over, <laughs> chest and everything, over the foot. Good. And you should feel one glute squeeze and then the other side. It is very important that we can use one glute and then the other one. One second. Lily, you need to be quiet so everybody can hear me, okay? All right. <laughs> Cool, and then forwards and backwards. You should be able to feel your abdominals working as you take the weight backwards, and then your glutes working a little bit as you take the weight forwards. Now, if this isn't happening naturally, then one thing to do is to actually ask your body to do it. So tuck under a little bit, and then use your back a little bit. Tuck a little bit, and then use your back. Brilliant, all right, let's go side to side again. Good, and then settle the rest of your body into a good position. We're going to soften the knees slightly, and that just means very slightly bent, just taking them out of that locked position. Tuck your bottom under gently, not too strongly, so I don't want you collapsing, just tuck under gently, broaden and open out through the front of the chest. Tuck your chin and lengthen up through the back of the neck. So feel like there's some balloons pulling you up and stretching up through the back of the neck there. Good, and then we're just going to start with some squats today. So sticking your bottom backwards, and then coming back up tall. Sticking your bottom back, and coming up tall. And let's add the arms. So bringing your arms forwards. Think more about coming up than about lowering. So squeeze and pull yourself up. Squeeze your bottom and pull yourself up. Drop your shoulders as well as you come up tall. Think about sitting back into your heels. Think about squeezing and tightening your thighs as you come. It's amazing how much you can talk to those muscles and make them activate, make them squeeze make them help you with the movement. So it makes you wonder how you actually move around without actually physically thinking about it. Cam, can you just pull the dishwasher to open it a little bit so not yeah. making a noise? Brilliant. Good. Just two more. Cool. And then we're going to come down and then I just want you to move that arms up and down. So you're staying in that squat position with your lower tummy scooped in, just bringing the arms up to shoulder height there. So those legs are really working to hold you in that position. Sit back into your heels as you're doing it. And then five more, pulling all the way up. One, two, notice my arms just come in line with the body. Three, four, five. Fantastic, come back up again. Okay, so that's quite hard work, of course. Bring your feet again, hip with the class in front of you. I want you to turn your toes out, then swivel and turn your heels out. Then turn your toes out again. By doing this, it brings those legs really quite nice and wide. And then I just want you squatting and lifting. So you'll notice that a lot of these exercises are very similar each time but I try to give a slightly different twist to them if we can, just to make them a bit more interesting. But by keeping them quite similar each session, you can feel your improvements. I 
And you also know that you're doing it right. Because if you're doing the same thing again and again, you're not learning new positions and new movements. It means we can get more done. Brilliant. Tighten through the thighs as well. So again, it's the upwards motion that's more important. You lower in a controlled way and then you squeeze to come up. Lower controlled and squeeze to come up. Good. All right. Staying at the bottom, lifting alternate heels. Lift down, lift down, lift down down keeping those hips level if you keep your knees rotated out then you should use the glutes on the side here your glute knees side glutes both heels lift and down brilliant cool. and lift both heels stay there and just pulse up and down with the knees so my heels are off the floor. I think you can see my feet are in shot. Squeezing in through your tummy. Brilliant. Come back up again. Turn your toes in. Heels in, toes in, heels in. Right, brilliant. So, heels are now together. You are nice and upright. Your chest is open. Hands on your hips. Bend both knees. Point one toe out to the side. So that leg, I know I am 2D, but that leg is off in that direction. It's not straight out to the side. It's a little bit in front. Squeeze in through your lower tummy, hands on your hips, and we're lifting that leg. Now keep that locked, keep that locked straight. The other knee is bent. And your knees are pointing in the direction of your toes. If in doubt, drop this hip a little bit. I can see quite nicely with the camera there that my hips are, actually my hips are a bit wonky, <laughs> that my hips are staying level. If you've got yourself in front of you on the screen, you can check whether your hips are level. You've got a mirror behind you, even better, or a window. Good, stop there. Now I just want that ankle to point to the legs. Good. Now it's this standing leg that's doing the work. You should be a little bit bent through that leg. This knee should be completely locked. Good. Now, from there, stay there. Take the leg back to point straight out. And then take it forward again to where it was. Back, forward, tap, tap. Oh, that's difficult. Let's make my toes cramp as well. Scoop in that tummy, keep that hip down. It's hard around that glute. Three, two, one. Bring the leg in and try and stay down with both knees bent. Point the other toe out to the side, but not straight out, remember it's at an angle. 10 to two, think about it on the clock face. Keep those hips level, drop the shoulders, tuck the chin. Lift that straight leg first. Knee and thigh locked. Tummy working. Posture good. Standing on that standing leg. Don't roll in. Don't let that arch collapse on that standing leg. Good. Taking a deep breath. Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> Point and flex. So this one will always feel more difficult because you've just worked it on the other side. I'm going to show you another correction as well. See how I'm quite nice and straight? Lots of people end up doing this. <laughs> Tap back and forwards. Back and forwards. This one's a killer. Cool. <laughs> Keep breathing. <laughs> Brilliant. Just two more. Oh, nice. Give your legs a little shake. Kick them out in front of you there. And that should just be enough to calm all of that down around the waist there. Oh, cool. Okay, so a little bit of rotation, I think. If we step our legs out to that nice wide stance again, bend your knees, arms out in front. You rotate one arm back and around, and then to the front again, the palms come back together. 
rotate, and then to the front, scooping your tummy and try and keep all of that still. Out and together, drop your shoulders. Brilliant. Good, so rotation of this upper chest is so, so important. Important for getting um, good breaths in because it um, helps you to keep mobile through your chest and your ribs. And also important for shoulder health and stability and lower back as well. So mobility through this upper chest is so, so important. Good. It tends to be what we lose when we sit for too long as well. And then let's go with side to side motion as well. Hands on your um, thighs and coming down to the side and coming back up. The reason why I adopt this position here is to lock the lower half. It means you can only use the upper bit. Good. Notice my head going with the movement. Good. Nice. Let's do one more each side. Brilliant. Straighten the knees, bring your feet back in again. Okay, so your toes are pointing forwards. We're going to breathe in, come up onto the toes, breathe out, drop onto the heels and your hands go behind your head. Breathe in, lift your shoulders, breathe out and drop. Breathe in, stretch up. Breathe out and round. So now you can't see my fingertips. <laughs> Not you with the two. They go all the way up. Breathe in. All the way up. Down onto your heels. Breathe out. Breathe in. Lift your shoulders. Breathe out and draw. Breathe in. Stretch up. Breathe out and round. Good. Last little bit in standing. Lily, quiet. Last little bit in standing. Take your weight onto your left foot. Pick up your right in front of you there. And I just want some circles of the ankle, drawing in the tummy. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then we're going to circle from the knee. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. I just had a funny thought. Circle from the hip, and we have these massive legs going round like this, as if I could do that. Okay, other leg. Bring that one down. Squeeze your bum. Squeeze your thigh. Pick up the leg to the front. Yeah, my daughter's doing that. Of course she is. Circle the ankle. One, two, three, four. Keep the hips level. Shoulders down. Six, seven, eight, nine. Ten, circle from the knee. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Brilliant. And come back down again. Lovely. Give your legs a little shake. Coming on to the end of your mat. Soften your knees again slightly. Tuck your bottom under. Arms just on front of your thighs. Tuck your chin, curl down with what you believe is one vertebra at a time. Of course, you can't be so super strict with those. All the way to the bottom. Now I just get the urge to breathe as soon as we come down to the bottom here. So take a breath in, and the breath will come to the back of your lungs. And breathe out, and ease your way a little bit further down. Breathing in through the nose. And out of your mouth, just ease a little bit further. Let the head and the arms go heavy. Breathing in and breathing out. Reach up behind you, hook your hands together, and just stretch backwards like that. It's just a bit of an interesting and slightly awkward stretch of the shoulders. I think it's called skin the cat. <laughs> Don't know. Think too much about what that actually means. Good. Coming back down, bending your knees and walking your way forwards. So we are on the hands and knees. I would like you to stretch your, I'm going to do it with my left arm because it's closest to the camera. Left arm forwards, lift, down and in. 
And then I want you to stretch to the side. Lift, down, in. Stretch back, lift, down, and in. So now let's do it with a bit less of a pause because I think that's going to get a bit jerky and a bit annoying. So stretch forwards, down, sideways, down, backwards, down, and then we swap. Right arm forwards, sideways, backwards. Okay, so keep going with that. I want you, while you're doing this exercise, to so think about your lower tummy. Scooping in, keeping your back nice and flat. Forwards, sideways, back. Everything's flat. So you're, as far as your back is concerned, think about a tray of drinks on your back. Forwards, sideways, back. So it's not rotating when the arm goes forwards. It's not arching. Well, not rotating when it goes sideways, I should say. It's not arching when it goes forwards. Good. Forwards, sideways, back. And arm. It's a bit harder than you expect, actually, especially on that arm that you're stabilising with. Let's do one more each side of these. Forwards, sideways, back. The other side, forwards, sideways, back. Brilliant. So, we're going to stretch that right leg back. We're going to lift and drop at the hip. Keep the leg locked straight. Circles, two, I don't mind which direction, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and circle the other way, draw in your tummy. I just have to correct myself, looking at my picture in there. So close down at the front, bend and straighten the knee, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Bring that in, give yourself a little wiggle before you start on the other side. Stretch back, lock the knee. Stretch up, drop the hip a little. Scoop in the tummy and circle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Circle the other way. One, three, keep breathing. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bend and straighten that knee. Two, three, stop on the chair. Four, five, six, seven, eight, two more, nine, ten. Brilliant, bring that leg down. Stretch back and up to your hands and knees. Stretch back and up. Good. And let's add a cobra in there. So stretch back, hands and knees, drop the hips, and come back up. Stretch back, hands and knees, forwards. Okay. Lily's just plugging my laptop in to keep it charged. Thanks, Lily. Because it came out. Because it came out. <laughs> and back. And up. Okay, last one. Stretch forwards, up. And back. And up. So quite nice and relaxed, those ones. It just depends on how flexible you are, though. If you're rather flexible, then they're okay. But if you're stiff, then they're possibly not so okay. So coming around. I'm just going to move that chair out of the way, just in case any of my limbs go out that far. So we are going to be in sitting, pulling yourself up tall. Okay, so your shoulders should be above your hips. Now, if you've got tight hamstrings with your legs out straight, you would struggle perhaps to have your shoulders above your hips. If you bend your knees a little bit, then you can get yourself into that position. The later exercises that we do with this one, if you have the legs straight and you're tight and you're back here somewhere, then it might be best to keep your knees bent. So having your arms out in front of you with the thumbs together like that. We're going to curl back, scoop in the tummy, come up tall and open your arms wide. Curl back and come up tall. So as you curl back, the back muscles stretch, the front muscles shorten. As you come up tall, the front muscles open, the back muscles close. Cool. 
Okay, and as far as those arm movements are concerned, they really encourage you to come up tall and open your chest when you come up. The temptation sometimes with this exercise is to come forwards, almost like you're rowing backwards and forwards. And what happens there is you end up using too much momentum. Momentum is not good with Pilates, because then you don't end up using the muscles and stabilising. Good. Who'd have thought colouring would be such a noisy exercise? Can you hear any colour in the background? <laughs> You'd think oh, yeah. it would be one of the quieter things to do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one of these. Brilliant, bring your legs out straight and come forwards. Good, and a little bit of side to side motion there just gets the two sides of the back to stretch those out a little bit. Okay, so with your legs straight, Point your toes a little bit, it's not essential. It don't make your feet go into cramp too much, but I always think pointing the toes a little bit at the end isn't to make you look like a ballerina necessarily. It helps you draw the strength up through the whole leg. So if you point your toes, you tend to tense your thighs and do all of that as well. Palms together at the front, curl back, open one arm and together, and then open the other arm and together. So we're staying back like this. But you're trying not to curl your whole body like that. So notice, come up tall with the top half. Cool. Turn your head with the movement as well. Nice. One more on each side. Lovely, and come forwards. So, next exercise, rolling like a ball, it's called. It's one of the original Pilates exercises. Um, not many of them you'd probably recognise, to be honest, from what I do. Um, I don't teach a very traditional form of Pilates, but this is one. Rolling like a ball, rolling back, coming up, and stopping, <laughs> she says, before your toes touch the floor. Roll back come up and stop and it just takes a little bit of abdominal work so let's get going on that one pull up tall each time in between hook your hands around your knees there and try and stay as strong and as stable as you can with each one of these it feels quite nice to be honest it does depend on what surface you're on and whether you've got a zip at the back of your leggings as well that's another thing or your shorts um anyway, it's fine Good, last one, and then we're going to make it a bit more interesting. On the next one, we're going to roll back, we're going to come up, we're going to stretch one leg forwards, the other one bends, and then we stretch forwards. So we're going to roll back, and then swap legs. The other leg comes forwards, and we stretch forwards. So it's a sort of active way of getting a bit of mobility. So you get a bit of hip mobility on that side, and you stretch down the hamstring on the other. Cool. You've got kids in the room with you, this one tends to appeal to them a little bit. <laughs> cool. One more each side. Last one. Brilliant. Okay, so from there, in a much more controlled manner, we're going to come down onto our backs with the feet hip width apart. Toes pointing forwards, like I say, hip feet hip width apart, knees hip width apart, hands on your hips and elbows down to the sides. From the top down, tuck through your chin, broaden and open through the chest. Take a breath in through your nose. Breathe out. Lily, quiet, please. Breathe out and drop your ribs. Rock your pelvis backwards and forwards. Arching your back, tucking your bottom under. Arch and tuck. Now make this a little bit more active. So when you tuck your bottom under, use the front of your body. When you arch your back, use your back. So you're actually, instead of just rocking mindlessly, you're thinking 
about what you need to use for those, those two positions. And then, of course, what we do is settle in between. So if you think about it, if you're using the front to tuck under and you're using the back to arch your back, in that position in between, you want to be kind of equally working both, which is what this is all about. Draw in your lower tummy. I usually use the pelvic floor as a cue to tighten because we don't have an ability really to squeeze and tighten through here. So if you use your pelvic floor to tighten and squeeze, then that gives the deep abdominals a chance to work. Once you've got that switched on, lift and lower alternate legs. Now with all of that, it's not necessarily a confusing concept, it's just making your body do it. Well, all I want you to do is believe that you have done it. If your hips are staying stable, if you can feel just a little bit of tightening around the lower tummy, then brilliant. You're able to lift one leg at a time whilst keeping this bit still. You're doing it right. I don't want you to get too stressed about whether you are right or not. Cool. And as you're doing it, return to the other positions. Tuck your chin. Broaden your chest, pull your shoulders down, and keep your ribs down. Add just a few gentle breaths while you're in that position. Nice. And then lower one knee to the side and come back up. And then the other knee to the side and come back up. Now continue with that why they bring you closer. Now it's partly, oh my gosh, I'm knocking everything over by bringing you closer, but never mind. Um, it's partly so I can see what I'm doing. I want to make sure that I'm doing all the right things. If you're up on the table there, I can't see. <laughs> oh, I'm on the second table, taking the table to the side, aren't we? <coughs> so use your glute to pull the knee out to the side. Use the glutes on the other side to pull the knee to the side. Now this one, if when we were lifting the front feet up to the front, we were looking at stabilizing the pelvis this way. This one, obviously, you've got to try and keep the pelvis still and not let it rock from side to side. Brilliant. And still be able to breathe at the same time. Okay. Next one, tabletop, stretch away, back in and down. Now it's a little bit jerky. You expect Pilates to be all nice and flowy, of course, but this one's a slightly more jerky movement. You come to tabletop, you stretch away, you squeeze your thigh back in and down. You kind of unnecessarily squeeze the thigh hard, so as tight as you can, as if you're trying to elongate that leg and stretch and push a button on the far wall. Recheck your positions. Tuck your chin, open your chest, ribs down, shoulders away from the ears. Draw in that lower tummy. Good, place your feet firmly on the floor each time. Keep breathing, so many things. <laughs> Good. One more each side. Last one. Brilliant, so to prepare for the next exercises where we've got both legs up off the floor at the same time, I want to do some crunch-like exercises because those were the deep ones, everything else is relaxed, then we layer up and we get the outer muscles to squeeze and tighten. So we're gonna do a set of hundreds here um, to get all of that working. If you bring your chin to your chest and then your shoulders off, Stretch your fingertips down and away towards your toes. Have your elbows locked. Your chin is tucked, your neck is lengthened, and you pulse your arms up and down. Squeezing in that lower tummy. And then this is the only one I tend to talk about breathing too much. So if you breathe in for five, and breathe out for five pulses. Breathe in, and out. In, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five. Right hand behind your head with your elbow wide. Left leg to tabletop and your left arm is going up and down. You can just about see it in the camera there. If I stretch away a little, you see my features anyway. 
<laughs> up and down with that hand. Good. Keep squeezing in through your lower tummy. So with your head lifted, you can look down and along your tummy to make sure it's still in a kind of inward fashion. Swap sides. Uh, should have done this one first, shouldn't I? And then you can see what I'm doing. So I just adjusted my toes a little bit down there. I've got a temptation to keep them high if everybody can have a quick check to see that if that's what's happening with them. But beat that hand up and down, breathe in, two, three, four, five, out, two, three, four, five, good. Last set of ten here. And come down if you've really had enough, but if you've not, bring the other leg up to tabletop, squeeze in your tummy, both arms down by your sides and beat your hands up and down like that. <sighs> Good. I'm going to just keep going. Hey, stretch out your right leg and up and down with the right arm. So do stop if you find your tummy's getting sore, your back's getting sore. It's just a bit too much. Just stop. Have a little stretch. Swap sides. Good. You might as well get it done. If we have four to five minutes to get a class done, we might as well get it. Get it all in. Nice one. Bring your knees into your chest. Roll your knees from side to side. Brilliant. So just for future reference, I should have said as we went along there, you can stick with the lower levels here. If all of this is getting a little bit too difficult, just stick with the lower levels. And even with hundreds, this is the first level with your head and shoulders down. So you can always stick to that. Cool. Okay. So... Hands on your hips, and the front of your hips here, elbows out to the side, broaden your chest, keep your ribs down, right leg up, left up, stretch out and in, stretch the other leg out and in, good. Drawing in your tummy, stretching the leg and pulling back in, stretching the leg and pulling back in. Now, if you want to work a bit harder, there are always, always ways of working harder. So you can bring that leg further along the floor and come back in, look like that, the lower the leg goes. And if you're really thinking to yourself, you want to work a bit harder, come into a crunch at the same time. Not always harder to prefer. If you thought, oh, that makes it easier, come back down again. <laughs> Brilliant. Squeeze in that lower tummy. Quite naturally, I move to putting my hands here. If you can see, I think it's a bit of a shadow there, but thumbs on the ribs, fingertips reaching straight down. In that way, I can tell whether that's opening out. So that would be bad, right? That would be bad. Now, if I've not got the awareness of that, Hand on the front of the tummy like that, thumbs on the ribs, fingertips stretching down. Gives you a good idea. Lily, be quiet, please. Okay. Oh my God. Okay, stop there. Bring your knees into your chest, roll them from side to side. Cool. Take a nice breath in. Feet back onto the floor. Arms straight up in front of you. I want to reach up above the head. Now, even that little action needs to be focused on. So when you reach your arms up above the head, the ribs want to follow the movement, they want to lift. So keep the ribs pinned down. Straight up above the head, scoop around and up to the knees. Now, as you crunch here, you maintain a little arch in the lower back. So a bad form would be letting the ribs come up, scooping round, and then flattening as you come up. Good form, keep that little arch, keep the ribs down, scoop around and up. You feel a little bit more restricted with this good form, but hey, with restriction comes force. So if you are restricted in that range, you create more force against the restriction which is where the muscle strength comes. Good. Two more. Now you can keep the legs down and keep going, but what I want you to do if you're feeling comfortable, have both legs up to tabletop here, crunching and lifting. 
Good. Six. Three. Four. Five. Gonna do ten. Six. Seven. Heavy on the neck, I know. Eight. Nine. Ten. Fantastic. Come back down and just massage those muscles in the back of the neck there. Just to release it off and roll your head from side to side. Cool. All right, so we're going to come over onto our sides. I would like you to make a pillow for your head with that bottom arm. I want you to tuck your bottom hip back and scoop your bottom under, just like we're getting ready to do those clamp exercises. And that top arm in front. You're going to breathe in as the arm comes up, breathe out as the arm comes over, but your hips stay stacked. Ooh, where's the arm there? <laughs> And come back to the front again. Breathe in. Out and over. Two. Breathe in as you come up. Out as you go over. Three. Two more. Four. Good. And one more. Fantastic. So, um, prop yourself up on that hand. I just made that little adjustment of my ribs backwards because everything needs to feel like it's rolling forward slightly. Tuck your bottom under and lift your top knee. Good. Okay. You're going to do 20 here. Eight, nine, ten, another ten. Good. Squeezing in through that lower tummy. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, right, come up onto that elbow, there. Don't let yourself sink into it, come up out of it. I then want you to lift up your hips and do the same movement again. Two, three, keep strong through here, four, five, keep the hip down if you need to. Don't feel like you have to follow these slightly more difficult movements. Definitely don't hurt yourself by doing them. So if anything's painful more than you would expect from the exercise, don't get into these slightly more difficult positions. I was just gonna say feet up, I don't even think it's possible. Brilliant, stop there, come down with the hip. Come down to here, prop yourself up. I would like you to straighten out your bottom leg, top, toes, hooked around the back knee and down. So you can see that these toes are hooked around that knee. Squeeze in through your tummy, lift that knee. You should probably need your fingertips in front of you there. Three, four, if you don't then great, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cough in the background. Over to the other side, and don't worry, I haven't forgot that first exercise we did. So make a pillow for your head, bottom tucked back, bottom tucked under, ribs, top ribs forwards like that, and then your hand in front of you. Breathe in as you come up, breathe out as it goes over. Keep the hips stacked and come back to the front again. Breathe in as you come up, breathe out as you go over. Good. Over to the front again. In. Out. That breath out just helps you go that little bit further. Last one. Breathe in. Breathe out. And over. Brilliant. Okay. So we are propped up here. Have another little adjustment. Heels in line with your bum. And lifting that top knee. Draw in through your tummy. Good. So you should be working in here, mostly at the back, ideally not so much at the front, which is one reason I do that little roll forwards like that. Cool. Relax through the shoulder as much as you can. I think that is my 20. So remember we're coming up onto that elbow there. We're lifting up through the hips, this hand is on the floor, 
Oh, or in here. Two, three, four, five. You can have that hip down. Please oh, don't cause yourself any problems in areas you may already have problems. It's hard to see somebody at the moment, isn't it, to get anything fixed. So please don't cause yourself injuries. <laughs> hip down, coming down flat. Straighten your bottom leg, bend your top leg, toes hooked behind the knee. Get yourself in position and strong through here, lifting that top knee. Two, three, four, five. Down the other side, didn't we? Fantastic. Okay, so let's come up into our mermaid position. So here we are, bringing yourself up tall, shoulders nice and level, trying to get this hip down to the floor a little bit. We're coming over and onto the elbow for three, one. Push back up again, assume that middle position again. Two, good. Three. And then we're going to the awkward side, which is the other side. One, good. Two, stretch over as long as you can with that arm. Three, coming up onto your knees. One, and stretching over. Good. Two, drop the shoulders in between, drop and down. Three, fantastic. Other side. So we're going to the same side essentially, but don't worry, it all equals out. One, drop the shoulders. Two. And the other side. One. I'm going to be done in two minutes. So I'll give you a hand. Two. Three. Two minutes. Up onto your knees. One. Two, three, and then while we're here, it's just popped into my head the next level of this exercise. So I'd like everyone to just give this a quick try, but we might do a little bit more of it next time. So you're coming up and over. Can you see? You've got to have that arm quite far stretched out. We'll do a little bit more of this on Friday. And see my feet, how they are. One, two, oh my gosh, you need a bit of balance. Three, and if you're still with me, go to the other side. If you're just having a watch and going to try it again on Friday, then do, oh my gosh, I've got the legs here. One, two. Brilliant, you need to wait for me. Okay. Last little stretch. Coming up onto the hands and knees. You know I love this one. It's so important to see your Pilates to stretch off the hip flexors. We use those quite significantly while we're doing it. I know my head's not in shot. Um, and lunge forwards. Tuck your bottom under. Um, and that's checking my flexibility there. <laughs> Tuck your bottom under and then lunge into it. Don't let yourself collapse. So check the bottom under and lunge into it like that. Good. Fantastic. Come back just to here. Point and flex the ankle. So you get all sorts of stretches with these ones. That's why they're my favourites at the moment. But stick with me, I have different favourites that come along. Other leg. Up tall, lunge a little bit whilst tucking under, so stretching that hip flexor. Good. Sit halfway back and point and flex the ankle. Cool. Good stuff. All right, so just to finish off, tuck your toes under. Stretch your bottom straight up, drop down into your heels, walk your ankles. Always nice, I think, to finish off with this one. It's quite energizing. Good. 
walk your hands to your feet, hang there. Now we did this at the beginning, this is a nice, nice check to see how flexible you feel after doing all of that work. Breathe in and out a couple of times. And then curl your way back up again to standing, just to finish off. So well done guys, another session done, another Tuesday. Um, I think it's a lovely thing to do on a Tuesday afternoon, so I hope you stick with us. Um, we'll just keep on going. Any specific requests, then write me a quick note. But lovely to see you. Enjoy the rest.